Hey everybody, this is Andy with RS Experience, and today I'm with a very special guest, uh, someone that I've been working with here now for the past few months with RS Experience, and that is Killboy, AK Daryl Cannon. So Daryl, um, thank you for taking a few minutes out. Hey, I'm Andy, a high-performance car enthusiast with a passion for well-engineered automobiles. I love to drive mountain roads with like-minded enthusiasts, along with sharing driving tips and techniques in my Porsche GT3 RS and BMW M2 CS. So one of the things, I, I, and I'm sure you get this question like four million times, so you probably have it down, uh, <laughs> is so the name Killboy, mm -hmm. right? So what's the genesis of the name, you know, Yeah, Killboy. it sounds, you know, like I was going for something morbid, but it was, it's an old video gaming nickname that I started using when I was playing online games back in the days and then registered the domain, not really knowing what I was going to do with it. And then it kind of snowballed into this thing. And now we're kind of stuck with it, but it's worked. I mean, it's something short and easy to remember, but it doesn't really have anything to do with, you know, the mortality rate on the dragon and didn't have anything to do with the dragon. I didn't know what it was going to be. You know, when right. I started off, I didn't, I was playing video games and driving RC cars and helicopters and stuff. And that wasn't what I was into. So it just became this thing that it is, but um, it works short. So yeah, it, it, it. it's funny because like not knowing the story, right? I, I tell myself stories and I started making this, I started thinking of what was it in World War II? There was that guy called Kilroy. Kilroy, Kil yeah. Kilroy was here, right? And he put his little image everywhere. And I, so I had this thing like, oh, Killboy. So he's omnipresent in the mountains here of the Smoky Mountains and taking yeah, photos yeah, and taking stickers and, take, was here. and taking photos, <laughs> yeah. you know? And I was like, oh, maybe I wonder if that's where he got it. So if you guys are out there and if you haven't heard of Killboy, you got to go out to killboy.com. Uh, on the website and on their site, they break out the photos. If I got this right, is break out their photos by day. So you have like a calendar. Oh, hey, I was there on you know Saturday. Mm -hmm. So you can go to Saturday, and they'll uh, most times break it out by like bikes, sports cars, mm -hmm. different things. So you can click on sports cars, and then it's all by time. So it's just chronological throughout time. So if you think you were there at 12:30 on a Saturday, then you, you can, can go out, right to it. Yeah. jump right to it, and then I think you. You have different options, right? They can buy prints, they can buy a digital. Is, yeah, is yeah, all kinds of products. We work through print labs, um, a couple of different print labs. So, but the most common things are digitals. People just get that, and then that's like having the negative. And we sell those for like less than 10 bucks. How did that all start though? Like this idea of taking pictures out there, how did that get started? I fell backwards into it. I <laughs> totally didn't mean to do it. So started coming out riding, taking a few pictures, putting them on the website. People were like, you know, take my picture so I can download it, you know, and I can put it on my phone or whatever, and and you could make a living at this, you know. So the seed got planted, and then for a couple of years, I just kept working on getting better and better, getting better equipment. Um, the digital camera scene was really making strides during that yeah. time. It yep. started off with little point-and-shoot cameras, which I still have my original one that would just eat batteries. Like every 20 pictures, you had to <laughs> change the batteries. Um, but, yeah, I worked on it for a couple of years, just giving them out, you know, putting them up there for free. And then I went commercial in 2003 and, you know, put them on a, a website and started trying to sell them. And then immediately it, it took off and, and I turned in my two-week notice a couple weeks later and um, just dove into it head first. And How many photos do you guys take? I don't know, a day, a week, a month? Like, I don't yeah. know how you, you kind of, how many photos do you guys So take? on a busy Saturday, each guy will take over 10,000 shots. Um, so a week is easily on average 50,000 over throughout the season. So we average about 50,000 a, a week, um, probably more now that, you know, we got a couple more guys out there now. So we typically try to have two guys out during the week and then three guys on the weekends just to make sure we don't miss anyone. Um, cause sometimes groups will come by, you know, it's, it's, it's not terribly busy, but, but sometimes you'll sit there for like 10 minutes and nothing. And then here comes a group of six, and here comes a group of six, and they go right in front of it at the same time, and you can't only oh, get one or the other. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we have more than one person out there, the odds of us not getting someone are greatly reduced, right. but then you get diminishing returns once you add three, four, you know, so we try to keep it two to three guys. Okay, just to keep that it. are out there, that yeah. are out there at a time. Daryl takes like this, it's stewardship, like this ownership of like, yes, in particular the dragon, but really it's any road that's around the area that he's driving on. 
And so what do I mean by stewardship? And it's things like when, when Daryl sees things, like uh, we were out one day and someone had dropped a transmission fluid or some oil on there, it's like he's immediately going out there with literally paint and a paintbrush and he's writing oil on the road. So when people are coming through, especially bikes and cars, they see this oil and they can see that line and it's like, hey guys, be careful of this. When he sees um, most, they're not supposed to be tractor trailers, like semis driving yeah. on there. Oversized and, vehicle, yeah. Oversized vehicles. And when Daryl sees this, like Daryl's like, oh no, oh God, like <laughs> he needs an escort or he shouldn't be doing First thing he's gonna try to do is get him to stop. Like, mm. don't go down there. But if they do, he usually tries to get out in front of them. You and I did that that one night, right? We yeah. saw that guy going down the road. You're like, oh man, we gotta get out in front of him and stop the traffic so like he can make those turns yeah, you know, they need swing, the whole load yeah to swing his load so it, it, it he really takes i said like ownership accountability but i think it's stewardship of the roads here which I, which i think is really neat and very special uh so i want to thank yeah. you for that i hope other people appreciate that they uh, probably don't know it a lot of people I'm, don't know it and i don't I've, I've done a couple of times where we've like shot photos of what we're doing or we shoot video, but it feels weird. But at the same time, I would like to see that normalized. It's like so many people will just drive right around a big boulder in the road or a piece of wood in the road. And like, there's a place to stop safely. And are you in that much of a hurry that you can't just stop for like 10 seconds and jump out and get this thing out of the road so it doesn't bust somebody's car up or cause somebody to wreck or whatever, you know? It doesn't take that long. Um, and so I, I sometimes I, I will shoot those things or video those things in an effort to sort of raise awareness to, and, and like I said, sort of normalize that because I don't think enough people realize that they can do that. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like you can clean that mess up and, too. And ultimately, safer, yeah. you're, that's what you're looking for. You want people to enjoy the roads. You want them yeah. to have a safe experience. This place gets but, such a bad rap. I'm tired but, of it, man. People talk about how dangerous it is, how dangerous it is. And, and there's way more accidents going on outside this area, but everything that happens here gets promoted and goes viral, you know, because there's so many cameras and everybody knows the tail of the dragon. Not everybody knows US Highway 847 up in Ohio, right. you know, and some people die up there more often than they do on the dragon, but I ain't gonna hear about it because it's not the dragon. Right. Everybody hears about the dragon. So I'm just sort of trying to keep that sort of negativity under control the best I can. I'll shift over and talk about cars a little bit. So um, you've, you've, you have access through some friendships, some cars, but so I want to talk a little bit about what you know, cars you have and what you enjoy about the cars, like, you know, just cars in general. And then I'd like to hear a little bit about, do you have like a bucket list of, you know, of cars for you? We've got uh, uh, several cars. We've got two S2000s, mine's a wide body and Lori's is, is pretty well set up too for handling. They're both uh, standard power, very fun cars. Not a lot of power, but that, I like those cars. Um, we had a couple of 8.6s, the, the Toyota uh, yep. Subaru 8.6, so we supercharged one and turbocharged the other, but they were very flaky build motors and everything, just really hard to, to put that much power to, so we had problems with those. I've got a, a Mitsubishi Evo 8, oh, yeah. um, all-wheel drive, turbo, four-cylinder, four-door car that's been down for like a decade, and we finally got that thing running again, and it's coming back into the scene and all that. But we, we started working around some other Porsche um, outfits and started experiencing Porsches through, you know, hands-on driving. And I never was a real Porsche person, um, but once I drove one, I was like, okay, I get it. And so we ended up getting, and we needed something practical right. at the time, and we were looking at different SUVs, and that's, we've always only had sports cars, you know. We've right. never had anything really practical, yeah, 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 and right. we were starting to do more uh, events where we need to carry things and stuff. And I wanted something that was still fun, so we ended up getting the Macan, uh, S and you know, souped that up a little bit, put, a, put some suspension on it and got it lowered and put some fat wheels and tires on it, did a little tune, got a little power out of it. Really fun vehicle for what it was and super reliable. Um, we put 100,000 miles on that thing in like three years and just oh, wow. no real problems. Yeah. Um, so we started looking for another fun, reliable, sporty car that we could add to the fleet that you know had a little more power than the S2000s. Um, and a little bit more nimble than the Evo. Uh, so I felt like the Cayman, the 718 platform, the Cayman Boxster platform, from my experiences driving it, um, a lot of different cars was like one of the perfect Dragon platforms. There's some that are a little bit more 
uh, aggressive setups um, like the Alfa Romeo 4C or the Lotus Elise, yep. but the ownership of those is difficult, yeah. especially in this yeah. part of the country where we don't have access to a right. lot of the service, uh, service and bays yep. and things. Yep. So the, the Cayman strikes a nice balance between being close to that level of you know, extreme performance, but still manageable to live with, reliable. Um, but it's got that, that, you know, narrowness, but it's still, you know, a little bit wide, but it's not so wide that it's difficult to drive down the road. Um, the like, centrally yeah. mounted uh, engine, um, I felt like gives it a nice pivot ability and, and rotation. I was concerned, I, I really didn't own a mid-engine mid car before I started playing around with these. And um, I was concerned, uh, the horror stories that you hear about mid-engine cars and how they're just uncontrollable at the limits. Right. And they'll, right. they'll go great until they break loose and then they're just out of control and uh, it's just not the case that's been a really fun car to hang the tail out and that's one of my things i've always avoided front wheel drive cars and even a lot of all wheel drive stuff i'm not crazy about because i like to play with the tail yep. and sort of goof off a little bit in the road nothing crazy sideways right. but just a little bit and um yeah the cayman's been really fun for that but i think i see the potential it has and and right from the get-go we've loved like the look of the gt4 yeah. But the difficulty in obtaining the GT4 with our budget, you know, and then I wasn't real crazy about the GT4's power delivery. I like a turbo better. Um, ha has more usable bottom end. The GT4 makes more power, but it's all sort of pushed up near the high yes. end. Yep. And um, when you're in the really tight stuff, you, you get down in the RPMs a lot and you have to get them back up. And, and so with the turbo car, it's got a lot more usable um, torque and, you know, and fat range. And then like you that. did a tune on that, right? And that changes mm -hmm. where that torque comes in. Yeah, right? with or the with the factory tune, they're trying to, you know, make the EPA happy and everything. So the tune can have a little dips around 4,000 and stuff like that. So it fixes that. So it helped a lot with the power delivery, added quite a bit of torque. The turbo comes on sooner and it helped with the shifting. It, it modified the transmission because we did get the PDK. Um, you know, transmission, but we're also looking at getting, um, it just has the basic suspension. It's not the active suspension, which I'm okay with because we were wanting to do coilovers and stuff like we did on the Macan, same yep. thing. Yep. Um, so we're going to go with, you know, some suspension, some bigger wheels and tires, um, get more front end grip because it's still a little bit pushy in the front. You have to really get on the gas to get the back end to, yep. to rotate. Um, so we'll probably bring the disparity between the front and rear widths just a little bit closer, maybe like one size higher in the front than we go up in the rear and that'll, that'll make them two sizes different rather than yep. three or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the car's got a lot of potential. It's already silly fast and and has surprised a lot of people with faster, better cars. It's like, holy crap, that thing's quick. Yeah, I, I've <laughs> been great. out here with some guys who have the Cayman S's and I was really impressed, especially, you know, people know how to drive too, mm -hmm. and then they have that car and it's like, and I agree with you about the size, the agility of the size mm -hmm. of that car on these roads. Like my RS just sometimes feels just like yeah, especially ginormous, on those really tight back roads. Yes, That's a I mean hard it's like I have drive. like I have like no room for error. On none, the Skyway zero. and, and yeah. twenty eight, one twenty nine yeah. South, yeah. it's yeah. all great. It does better than the Cayman, no doubt. Right. But my main you know, play areas, the tighter stuff, and that's yeah. where um, yeah, the, the, it's nice. The, yeah. the RS is just way, way too big. So bucket list cars. I mean, you get, you have, through some friendships and relationships, I mean, you've, you've driven some amazing cars. Um, so, but do you have bucket list car? Or? I don't know. I mean, I don't really uh, have one in particular. I, I I'm, enjoy and I'm grateful for all the cars that I get to drive. Um, they each have their own. I'm not like one of these people that sort of naturally gets into the negative on a car. I like to look at all the good things I have, and I've really enjoyed driving some cars that aren't great, great performers, but they're just so cool or pretty or sound so good. You know, that uh, the Lamborghini with the with the V10, um, just the, the sound that it makes, you know, is, is it does sound fascinating. Good. It, does sound it wasn't good. the greatest performer, but um, I love that car, and I could totally see living with that car. Um, but yeah, the, the top line Porsches, the, the 2RS and 3 The 2RS I drove um, up on the Dragon a, a couple of times and it felt weird. Like I think it's got some really aggressive rear steering and, and maybe it was the alignment, but it felt a little nervous. The 3RS to me was a better setup for the tighter stuff than the 2RS to me. But on the open roads and on the track, oh, yeah. I'm sure the 2RS yeah. just crushes Powers, it. Just, um, yeah. But what, it's like the... the 
the transition from one side to the other or from straight to one side, if you're doing that a lot real fast, that car didn't seem real happy. But once it settles in, it's a long turn and it was happy. But the 3RS just seemed like it was a sharper car that was, that was just railing. You know, it was like the tires were just cutting into the pavement um, so much better. So um, to me, that's one of the most amazing cars. The McLaren's top level cars, the 720 and the 600 LT, I got to drive that today. Really impressive um, yeah, I, machines. Yeah, yeah Mark was kind enough to let me drive the 600 LT. We switched cars yesterday, so I got to drive. He was it. impressed with yours too. <laughs> yeah, he was. Handling on that. Yeah, he said to me, he goes like, I don't know what people say about GT3, and the, he goes, I never had an RS, but the difference between the GT3 and the RS is like, it's huge. Yeah, he said. I've driven both as well. And he's, the he's the like, GT3 is a livable day-to-day -day car. Don't get that's like, yeah, it's a great touring car, yeah, yeah. but it's nowhere near the edginess of the 3 RS. The, the difference between those two. You know, just those two letters being added to the end it is a completely different car and definitely one of the most yeah, amazing he said, he, had, he said, he goes, I could do some damage in that <laughs> thing. <laughs> and then his 600 LT was, like when I was driving, it was like super flat. I mean, it, it like, it just felt like it was on planted, rails, yeah. like planted the steering, you know, gets, it, you know, the heavy and the, the hydraulic. I mean, it, it feels the most like Porsche to me, like mm. the, the steering of the car and then the brakes. They're not over boosted, so you got to get into them a little yeah. bit. But that's okay too, because like, like I have a BMW, the M2 CS, and that thing, if if I get into it too hard, I mean that thing will like, it feels like it'll stop like on a dime. Like mm. I'll put myself through the windshield. I like that modulation a little bit. And then yeah. of course, you know, who doesn't like flames shooting out of the top of your uh, <laughs> your exhaust? The on rear the hatch, yeah, 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 coming yeah. out of the top on top the 600 the LT. I mean, that's that's a nice thing too. All right, guys, um, that's it from here. As always, uh, you know. Give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to click the notification bell. Um, and then share your comments. If you have some questions for Daryl, uh, you know, please feel free. Uh, put them in the comments below. We'll get some answers for you guys. So thanks for watching. As always, stay healthy and stay safe.